you can become that spring of living water. It's not so that you can say, I've got it. It's so that you can say, I'm giving it. We can't be focused on what we have. We have to be focused on who we can give it to. Because the kingdom of God is all about, God doesn't want just a few people or a few churches. He wants the whole world. We got to stretch our hearts and minds out and see the world the way he sees it. He says, come on up, ascend up and look at the situation the way I do. Your circumstances won't look near as bad most of the time. And you'll start to get a vision of what the kingdom is truly about. Inside of you become a well. Inside of you become a spring. Now, what is a spring? In, in the Old Testament, there was a city where the prophets used to go. It was called Ramoth Gilead. That word means perpetual fountain in the high places. What a conundrum perpetual fountains in high places. Most of the time, the water is in the low places. But here is God. He's putting the spring in the mountains perpetually because he wants to bring us up to that place. He wants to build in us that spring that becomes perpetual. He wants to build in us an everlasting fountain of living water. So that what we have, we can give. And the more we give, the more it bubbles up. The more we have and the more we give, the more it bubbles up. That's how the kingdom works. That's truly sowing and reaping. All those principles work. They're all correct. But it's about getting into the kingdom. Remember, you get into the kingdom when you hear the voice of God and you're blessed to receive the keys. Then you can go in there and you can drink the living water. The living water is in the kingdom. Jesus said, if you knew who it was you were talking to. Now look, here is, flip back over to the, uh, the conversation with Jesus and Peter. 16th chapter of Matthew. Now, Peter just heard from God that you are Christ the son of the living God. And in verse 22, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, far be it from you, Lord, that this shall happen to you. And Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. You're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. You can get a revelation from God and not even know what that revelation is about. You see the difference between children and sons? Peter just saw that Jesus, you're the son of God. But that didn't register because in his spirit, he had not drank that living water. He had not seen truly what that kingdom was about. He was still living in the kingdom of this world. You can get the revelation from the kingdom of God, but if you're still planted in the kingdom of this world, you'll not use that correctly. So Jesus had to rebuke him. That rebuke was very strong, but it was very important. It's a father correcting child. A father correcting a child so he can become a son. Because we want fathers, but you've got to be a son first. See, the kingdom of God operates very, very much like this kingdom. Only it has principles that are very, very much more elevated, very different. When the son becomes a father, he takes on the characteristics and the DNA of the father who just trained him. And Saturday, I'm going to talk about how you multiply and reproduce in the kingdom of God. Churches are pulling their hair out, how they can get bigger. You got to follow kingdom principles. So Jesus rebukes Peter. So when your revelation comes 
and you're not in the kingdom of God because you haven't been drinking from the spring of the living water, then your revelation can be misused and misunderstood. But you're still blessed. You're still blessed because now you're training your ear to hear God. But if you've got a father who can correct you, then that son can start to become, a child can start to become a son. That's why we need one another body. That's why we need the fathers in the body of Christ. That's why you need the covering of a father. You don't need the covering of someone manipulative or someone that wants to control, but you need a father who will correct you and say, this is the kingdom principle. This is the way you need to go. Rebuke you when you need to be rebuked. The prophet needs to stand up in your life and say, that's tribulation, that's turmoil because of this, because of that. The voices were very few that talked about the tribulation and the, and the judgment that came upon the United States as a result of the hurricanes. I heard very few prophets say, this is judgment of God. Most of them said, you're going to be bigger and better and it's going to be rosy and wonderful. In the by and by. But the father says, okay, children, it's time for correction. It's time for you to grow up and become a son. We want to give you the authority in the kingdom. We want to make sure you understand what you're supposed to do. So here, drink this water. Understand what, how you are to be satiated in your spirit so you can become a spring of living water. It's a becoming. There is a progression in the kingdom. The only thing that's instantaneous is fast food. But in the kingdom of God, there is a progression. Children become sons, become fathers. Now back to the well in John 4. Now, Jesus was talking to someone here who was thirsty. The mere fact when she came and, and Jesus says, okay, go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now are with is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. You want to get into the kingdom and drink from Jesus? Start being honest and truthful with yourself. Take the masks off. Take all of the paraphernalia that hide you because you're not hiding yourself from God. You're just hiding yourself from your neighbor. God knows who you are. Jesus understands you. He loves you. He wants you to get real. He wants you to become a son. So this lady, she says, man, I, I, I want something here. I've got to have something here. I'm thirsty. I've been drinking this water for five husbands and one I'm living with now, and I'm still not filled. I'm still not satiated. I'm dying of thirst. What a picture. Over the well drinking and dying of thirst. If that's not a picture of the church today, I don't know what is. But the prophetic voice has come to give those who have ears to hear the word of the Lord.